The Art of Waging Small Business Warfare Podcast, teaching Davids how to defeat Goliaths. Now here's your host, Mark Anthony Peterson. Welcome back to the podcast for entrepreneurs, startups, and business mavericks. If you're not a maverick, you don't have to go home, but you got to get up out of this podcast. In this podcast, we teach entrepreneurs how to defeat the corporate giant. Just like in the story of David and Goliath, David defeated a much taller and stronger Goliath, not by fighting the giant in hand-to-hand combat, but by using technology. A slingshot. The slingshot allowed the smaller David to attack from a distance that minimized the advantages that Goliath had over the smaller David. My name is Mark Anthony Peterson. I'm a serial entrepreneur, a futurist, and the Managing Executive at CRL Consulting, a leading small business strategy and technology consulting firm. I am also the author of the book, Gorilla Panur, Small Business Strategy for David's Wanting to Defeat Goliaths, which is available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and iTunes. This podcast is brought to you by CRL Consulting. An idea can launch a business, a strategy can take it global. Guys, you can support the show on Patreon by going to patreon.com slash gorillapreneur. Donate to the show and help us launch a hacker space in the black belt to promote the use of gorillapreneur principles and technology in startups in the rural south. Episode 17 is a giant slaying episode. Gorillapreneurs integrate sharing, gig, and circular loop economies into their business design as a way to conserve cash that will be invested in disruptive technologies that I call slingshot technology. In Giant Slaying episodes, I will discuss strategies and tactics for helping you defeat the corporate giant. Today, we will discuss how to build a cult brand. Have you ever considered joining a cult? I'd join a cult if the cult's mission was to make hamburgers using donuts as the bun. But outside of that, probably not. But maybe you should consider building a cult around your startup brand. According to Interbrand's Best Global Brands ranking, Apple, Google, and Coca-Cola have the world's most valuable brands valued at $178 billion, $133 billion, and $73 billion, respectively. These Fortune 500 companies have invested millions to build goodwill with consumers that enable the brand owners to charge a premium for their products and services. As an entrepreneur and a startup, how can you compete with titans that spend more on social media in a day than your startup spins on sushi in a year. Gorillapreneurs know that matching titans dollar for dollar in mass market spending is insane. Instead, Gorillapreneurs seek to build a viral, if not cultish brand, by cultivating a brand identity around a core set of values that converts the casual customers into fanatics. Why, you might ask? Gorillapreneurs, by definition, are revolutionaries, and we build our businesses on disruptive slingshot technology that, when deployed, levels the playing field with corporate giants. Therefore, Gorillapreneurs know that when you're fighting a protracted ground war with a corporate giant, saving money on marketing is critical. And the best way to do that is to use cult branding tactics to build a fanatical customer base who will help you market your brand at a fraction of the cost it takes the corporate giant to reach the same audience. Apple, Snapple, Ben & Jerry's, Corvette, Lululemon's, Lennox, Zappos, 
and Harley-Davidson are all one-time startups who use cult branding tactics to launch their business. Each of these brands developed a unique story about the entrepreneur, the product, the service, or the company that made them seem bigger than life to their respective customer bases. Now, if you have a zillion dollars to invest in marketing, you can skip the rest of this episode. However, if you are like the rest of the entrepreneurial world, you need to conserve cash to invest in disruptive innovations. Now put on your Jedi robes, ignite your lightsabers, and let's review the 12 steps for building a Gorillapreneur cult brand. Step one, make your brand stand for something greater than just profits. The quest for profits cannot be the sole reason your startup exists. People want to believe in something greater than themselves. As Mulder from the X-Files is known to frequently say, I want to believe. When leaders tap into this energy, movements can be created in which individuals are willing to accept conditions that are not in their best interest in order to support the broader ideals of the movement. Yes, we can and make America great again are presidential slogans that catapulted political novices into the White House because citizens accepted the collective ideals of the movement as something bigger than the individual. Let's examine Corvette, Nike, and Southwest Airlines as case studies. Facing stiff competition from foreign sports cars, General Motors knew it needed to create mystique for its Corvette brand. So in late 1969, following the moon landing, the brand managers for the Corvette Stingray decided to associate its car with John F. Kennedy's space program and the original space cowboy astronauts who landed on the moon by giving them a free Corvette Stingray. When young men of the era saw these space hotshots driving the Corvette, the message was simple. Only the top guns drive Corvettes. Early in Nike's inception, the shoe company hitched its image to the coolness of young brand ambassador athletes. As profits increased, Nike replicated the Be Like Me strategy by signing the ultimate cool kid, Michael Jordan. And when Michael Jordan performed his magic on the court, everybody knew it was the shoes. And after a system crash caused hundreds of flight delays, Southwest Airlines ordered pizzas for its customers who were stuck in the terminals. The message was simple. We know you're frustrated, but we do care. These brands have built fanatical followings because they have made their image stand for more than just profits. If you hope to dethrone the corporate giant, make sure your brand stands for something or your customers will fall for another competitor's brand. Step two, focus on a niche market. Gorillapreneurs understand the key to winning is to focus on an underserved market that corporate giants cannot serve because it lacks the technology to do so profitably. Slingshot technology enables the Gorillapreneur to serve these niche markets at a price or service level equal to or below that of the corporate giant. Walmart is the perfect case study for this example. Walmart, which started in a small town of less than 5,000 people, perfected the inventory management technology and that enabled it to serve and price at a level below the corporate giant that dominated its industry, Kmart. In five short years, Walmart had fanatics who were crazy for the store's everyday low prices. Step three, create an exclusive rite of passage for your fanatics. Startups can't afford to buy customers using discounts or persuade them with million dollar advertising budgets. But fostering a belief that by purchasing a product, a customer is joining a secret club, startups can filter out non-believers and stretch their marketing budget through word-of-mouth sales. Secret clubs have secret handshakes, and those who do not know the grip 
are easily found out as frauds. People want to feel like they are part of an inside club with secrets that provide them unique benefits. Starbucks and In-N-Out Burger both have secret menus that loyal customers are aware of. These loyal customers share that secret menu with others they deem worthy of knowing the information, making them part of the club. Cult brands empower followers to create rituals that can be passed from generation to generation. True Star Wars fans can spot other fanatics based on the number of Yoda quotes they can recite. Not to be outdone, Trekkies flaunt their Star Trek quotes as a badge of honor at every Dragon Con. Live long and prosper. You might think that a rite of passage for your brand is archaic. However, a 2013 study by the Association of Psychological Science entitled Rituals Enhanced Consumption indicated that customers who participate in ritualized behavior enjoy their brand experience more than customers who perform random gestures. Moreover, the study also found that a delay between a ritual and the opportunity to consume heightens enjoyment, which attests to the idea that ritual behavior stimulates goal-directed action. What does this mean? Well, in 2009, I took my daughter to Disneyland's Star Trader and helped her construct her first lightsaber. After we saw The Force Awakens two years ago, I asked her, are you going to take your kid to make a lightsaber? She just smiled and nodded. I'm certain that lightsaber ritual has taken place millions of times around the world between 2009 and 2017, and the love for Star Wars and family was passed from one generation to the next. The delayed gratification from the time that we made the lightsaber to the time that she saw her first Star Wars movie gave her heightened enjoyment for the franchise and made her a fanatic. Make your brand mean more than profits. Give your brand a story and it will be heard for generations to come. Step four, celebrate your customer's fanaticism by hosting annual festivals, rituals, and events to promote fan solidarity. Ancient religions celebrated the summer and winter solstices because they believe those days mark significant points in the struggle between light and darkness. Cult brand celebrations have to take on the same level of significance if consumers are going to buy in. Ben & Jerry's, the beloved Vermont-based ice cream company, their annual free ice cream cone giveaway is as much about celebrating community and the pushback against corporate greed as it is about marking the founding of the company. Snapple's ritual to put quirky facts underneath the caps of every bottle of tea encourages their loyal customers to strive to be different. And of course, Steve Jobs had members of the Apple cult believing that they were locked in a battle of good versus evil as they faced off IBM and later Microsoft. Macworld Expo, the annual conference where Apple zealots convened to celebrate Apple's victories, reflected Jobs' view of what the world should have been if Microsoft had not disrupted the space-time continuum. Festivals are an important part of the ritualization of a brand's history. If you fail to celebrate your history, your brand's story may become a thing of the past. Step 5. Empower your customers to share your brand's core values with like-minded individuals. Did you know that Ben & Jerry gives its Twitter followers the ability to direct where the cowmobile will deliver free ice cream? Let's talk about Linux. Linux is the operating system that is the underdog to Microsoft. Now what makes Linux different from Microsoft is that Linux is freeware that is maintained by a community of evangelical developers who preside over the code like Egyptian priests preparing a mummy for the journey to the underworld. These developers fiercely protect their community while actively promoting their belief that software should be free. When non-conforming developers try to profit from Linux without the sanctioned support of these priests, 
they band together to retain the community's ideals. When a startup's brand ideals become as personalized as these examples, the company can attract devotees who will aspire to those ideals and attract others who share the same mindset. Empower your most loyal customers by giving them ownership over the life of your brand. Give them access to express how the brand will evolve, and these devotees will reward your startup with thousands of like-minded followers. Step 6. Renew your brand's energy with disruptive slingshot innovations that reinforce your brand's identity. Let's use Ben and Jerry's as a case example for this step. Man, I love Ben and Jerry's. When Ben and Jerry's release a new flavor, the internet reverberates like a bell. I remember the day that Ben and Jerry's flavor Chunky Monkey, that's banana ice cream with fudge chunks and walnuts, was announced. I trampled a store clerk and a stocking associate to get my hands on a pipe. As I inhaled the frozen treat, I imagined what it must be like working in the Ben & Jerry's R&D kitchen. Could it be the ice cream equivalent of the Willy Wonka factory? The fact that a grown man is pondering these thoughts indicates that either I need counseling, which I probably do, or that the brand has continued to reinvest in slingshot technology that has kept me engaged in the future of the brand. Slingshot innovations renew one's faith in the ideals of the cult brand. You don't think slingshot innovations are important to a startup's fight against a corporate titan? Last year, Ben & Jerry's announced a line of vegan ice cream and Chunky Monkey, my favorite brand, was the first flavor converted for non-dairy customers. Did Ben & Jerry's violate its cult ideals? No. This slingshot innovation reinforced Ben & Jerry's as an innovative and quirky company that cares about making the world a better and healthier place. Let's also add Apple as a case study for this step. If you're a child of the 80s, I bet you dollars to empty boxes of donuts that you jumped from your seat when Steve Jobs introduced the first Apple computer. Keep your hands raised if you repeated that same leap when Jobs introduced the iPhone 4. Today, Apple is one of the most valuable companies on the planet. The Apple cult waited 31 years between the April 1st, 1976 launch of the Apple computer and the June 29th, 2007 launch of the iPhone. Today, Amazon's Alexa and Google's Google Home are encroaching on Apple's virtual assistant, Siri, and the smartphone. A fire requires constant oxygen to keep the flames burning hot. Members of the Apple cult are awaiting the next disruptive tech that will renew hope that all things Apple are still perfect. What will be the next market that Apple will disrupt? Will they go heavy into driverless cars? Will they finally disrupt the TV? Will they get their own home assistant? We don't know. But if Apple does not continue disrupting and making us say, wow, the Apple cult might just stop drinking the Kool-Aid. Step seven, give your fanatics a symbol to rally behind. A clear belief system is necessary for a group to grow with purpose and symbols are the perfect tool on which to build a brand culture. The San Diego Padres became one of my favorite teams during my childhood because of a mascot, the San Diego Chicken, now just known as the Famous Chicken. The San Diego Chicken's antics gave the team a personality in which fans could identify. My friends and I imitated the San Diego Chicken's physical comedy during backyard pickup baseball games. Mascots have that ability to broaden the appeal of a brand ideals to a wider set of customer demographics. As a fan of hamburgers, I list Ronald McDonald and Burger King as my next of kin on my insurance documents. 
That's how much those two symbols mean to me. Of course, what kid of the 80s does not remember seeing Tony the Tiger on every other commercial during our Saturday morning cartoons? And when the commercials would come on, we'd scream, They're great! In unison with the cartoon Tiger. As a cult brand owner, I know it is important that your startup humanize and personalize your brand's ideals into a symbol or a mascot with whom your devotees can identify. When you see the Apple logo on the bumper of a car, what do you think about the person that's driving? When you see someone wearing the Playboy logo on a baseball cap, what do you think of the individual? Symbols can be converted into swag that fanatics can wear and share to tout their membership in your exclusive club. Step 8. Make sure your marketing campaigns and your operations align to meet your fan base expectations. Chick-fil-A has one of the best integrated and best aligned media and operation strategies in corporate America. The Chick-fil-A billboards show cows in funny scenes encouraging customers to eat more chicken. Chick-fil-A's television commercials continue the same dialogue, showing cows walking to the beat of staying alive while encouraging everyone to eat chicken instead of beef. Chick-fil-A's website connects customers directly to chicken products marketed by cows. Now, after you've had all that fun with commercials and billboards, when you're on the site, they offer their customers a free chicken product promotion, like the spicy chicken sandwich. When the samples are accepted, the customers must use the website to schedule a time and place to pick up the free product instead of just letting them walk randomly into any store to redeem it. Chick-fil-A collects all sorts of information about the customer in order to get the free promotion. And by scheduling them to a specific time and place, they can load, balance, and give them excellent service when they walk in to redeem the coupon. This approach gives Chick-fil-A three benefits. An opt-in email list, a method for balancing store workloads, and consumer research derived from areas where the redemptions occur. That's all terrific alignment and managing customer expectations all at the same time. Remember, your brand is only as strong as its weakest link. If your cult branding efforts promise something that your operations cannot deliver, you may have dug a hole you cannot climb out of. Number nine. Recruit influencers to represent your brand. When it was still a startup, Nike hired high school quarterbacks and star basketball players to wear their shoes. The intent was the same as when they hired Michael Jordan in later years. The best and coolest athletes wear Nikes. In fact, Phil Knight himself, the co-founder of the company, was the very first guinea pig to try on a prototype shoe when he was a student athlete at the University of Oregon. Find the cool people, get them to represent your brand, and guess what? Your brand is going to be considered cool. Don't think this applies to all businesses? It does. It even applies to B2B transactions. When my partner and I launched our biometric startup, we picked one of the cooler, faster-growing regional banks as our first test customer. We knew that if we could make it work in that bank, all the other banks that were stodgy and uh, stuffy and balance sheets, these guys would give us a shot because they wanted to be like the cool guys. And that's what happened. A year of testing with the cool bank got us many of the stodgy old conservative banks. Step 10, break all the rules. People dream of being a rebel. Who didn't want to be the Fonz on the 1980s sitcom? Happy days. Who didn't want to take a day off with Ferris Bueller? If you want your brand to connect, it has to have some rebel in its DNA. It has to break all the traditional business rules. Southwest Airlines, these guys break all the rules. Flight attendants have been caught on camera singing and rapping pre-flight instructions instead of showing a boring video. 
Customers who witnessed these acts quickly pulled out their smart devices, captured the video, and became social marketers for Southwest Airlines, sharing those zany videos on social media with thousands of followers. Remember, you were the gorillapreneur. Give yourself a little bit of that rebel and make your brand stand out. Step 11, define the enemy. If you are a member of the Rebel Alliance, your brand fanatics need to know the sins of the empire so they can understand what they are fighting for. Steve Jobs was a master at defining the corporate giants like IBM and Microsoft as the coal evil empire that sought to limit their individuality. The Apple 1984 Super Bowl commercial introducing the Macintosh computer, which only aired once, was a stroke of pure genius. The commercial not only defined IBM as Big Brother, a corporate overlord, it also cast IBM loyalists as drones. Now who wants to be a drone? Define for your employees and for your customers who they're fighting against and what they're fighting for. In the case of IBM, they were fighting for profits at the expense of your freedom. Apple was there to defend that. Very clear message, and it made everyone root for the underdog. Step 12, be elite and make your brand elite. Steve Jobs presented himself as both the savior for Apple and the computer industry. Wearing his black turtleneck and jeans, Jobs boldly predicted what consumers desired before they even knew it. After the launch of the iMac, Jobs was declared the unrivaled Silicon Valley guru. Jobs focused on the beauty and the artistic nature of tech, made the Apple product the fashion accessory for the geeks from Maine to Mountain View. If you're going to build a cult brand, you must establish yourself as the guru of your market segment. If you make cakes, Establish yourself as the cake boss. If you make pizzas, become the little Caesar. And make your product the elite solution for your niche of fanatics. Are you afraid to join a cult? Don't join one. Start one for your brand. Give your brand a face and celebrate it annually with your most loyal customers. As your devotees reward you with profits, continuously invest them and disruptive slingshot technology to sustain your movement. Hey guys, thank you for listening to the Giant Slang episode of the Gorilla Panure Podcast. If you can't get enough, sign up for my newsletter at cero.com. C-E-Y-E-R-O.com. Support the show. Go to patreon.com slash gorilla panure and donate whatever you can afford. If you can't afford to donate, share the show. Tell a friend, subscribe, leave comments. All of those things help to build this movement so that we can bring a little goodness to every part of the globe. Let's make 2018 a terrific year. Remember to check the show notes for a link to the Amazon Sweepstakes giveaway. You can also enter our monthly Sweepstakes giveaway of a signed copy of Gorilla Panure, Small Business Strategy for David's Wanting to Defeat Goliath by signing up for that newsletter at sierra.com. Gorilla Panures. Scott Sullivan said it best in Episode 7. Be a mace. Sharpen those spikes. And remember, if you're not breaking something, your company might be the next thing that gets broken. Thank you for listening to the Gorilla Preneur, the art of waging small business warfare podcast. If you enjoyed this podcast, you may also enjoy the book, Gorillapreneur, Small Business Strategy for David Wanting to Defeat Goliaths, available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and iTunes. Follow Mark Peterson on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at, at Gorillapreneur. Now I want to close with a quote from the great Chinese military strategist, Sun Tzu. Victorious warriors went first and then go to war, while defeated warriors go to war first, then seek to win. Keep fighting, guerrillapreneurs. <laughs>